de la Torre. Now, Marina is known as the trader chick, and she specializes in helping people day trade with confidence and consistency. She has this really great knack of simplifying the trading process by just kind of breaking down the art of identifying those high probability trade setups. And even if you're just getting started, she's taught many newbies how to day trade. And here's the key thing with confidence, with confidence and consistency. In today's presentation, she's going to talk about conquering the fear of missing a trade syndrome. She's going to share why FOMOT and over trading is your worst enemy. She's going to give you tips and techniques for building a solid trading plan. And she's going to share her favorite strategy for trading today's volatile markets. And with that, I'd like to welcome, uh, welcome Marina to the room. Marina, how are you doing? Hi, everybody. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Out. This screen, are you able to see my charts? Yes. Chart. Okay, cool. So you can see that. It has small. Uh, All right, cool. So let me just open this go. up. Yeah, we're good. All right, awesome. Hang on one sec. Let me just organize my screen so I have my chat open and everything else is ready to go. And thank you everybody for joining this really cool event. It's really, really exciting. And I appreciate you all being here and for listening. I know that you guys are all here to learn new stuff, to maybe at, you know find out some things that you could overcome, different challenges. So my goal really for you with this presentation is I'm here for you to be able to learn, right? And the way we learn the best is through questions. So please ask me all the questions that you have, anything that comes up, I will be answering all of them during the presentation. I can promise you that. So I just wanna do a quick hello that I, I am Marina, the trader chick, and that's me right here with one of my sons. And today what I wanna do is, um, actually this is one of my first times doing this type of a presentation. Basically what I wanna talk about, I wanna get back to the basics of trading, right? Because the most interesting thing of all, especially with day trading, I've been now doing this for over nine years. The first two years have been a real, real, real struggle for me because I find that the majority of academies or educations or even just watching YouTubes, nobody talks to us about the basics. It's kind of, I kind of felt like the first couple of years with my learning and the process was I wanted to learn how to play a musical instrument. And when I arrived to my conservatory, you know, to take music classes and music lessons, instead of going from the very beginning, I was literally thrown into an orchestral pit and just had to keep up. And when you do that, you totally sink or swim, but it's not fun to do either one, right? Even if you swim, you have to go through a lot of challenges and it could be really negative. But when I came back after totally sinking, and realizing that one thing that I never fully understood was just the basics of day trading and understanding a lot of the concept concepts and even misconceptions because day trading, I know you guys know, there are so many stigmas around it. And it's such a psychological, emotional activity that the more we can eliminate, the better we can be with our trading, right? And the more successful. And that really brings us down to the basics. And this is what I want to talk to you about today. There's quite a difference with day trading and investing. I want to really dive into the busting some of the myths around day trading so that once that's eliminated, a whole new door is open. What kind of, what to trade technically, the lingo. Uh, I want to talk about brokers, commissions, platforms, market movements, and then also obviously the simplification and the technical analysis of it all. Right. So let's jump in. But before we do, I kind of want to I want to just give you a quick intro of who I am. I am Rena. This is me and my family. We are expats in Antigua, Guatemala. Well, my husband is and he's actually Guatemalan. So I am an expat living in Guatemala. I do speak three languages. And the reason why I bring this up is because when I realized that listening to the market and watching the market is like an actual language of its own. And that is something that I really want to talk about because once you realize that, again, your trading, I can guarantee, will be taken to the next level. So basically, I was born in the Soviet Union. I'm a refugee from the Soviet Union. So I speak Russian fluently. I arrived to the US when I was really small. 
English is obviously my main language and I've been living in Central America for the past almost 20 years actually as an expat. So I speak Spanish fluently. Before I became a fitness, before I became a day trader, I was a fitness instructor and a travel writer. And this is something that I'm gonna talk about again is this misconception of who we are or who we need to be before we become day traders. And at the end of the day, it's anybody could do it. And that's the beauty of it. I still run my travel site, which is has been like my baby forever. And one of the reasons why I love day trading so much, even though at the moment we aren't able to travel as much as we normally can. My family and I usually travel for three to four months out of the year. So day trading is an awesome lifestyle, right? You could do it anywhere. You do not need to be shackled to any desk or any physical place. Okay, before I get started, I have I made a free workshop, a worksheet for you guys to go along with this presentation. You could get it right here at makingofadaytrader.com. Makingofadaytrader.com. So just go to it right now and you could grab it free. It will come to you in a second. And it you will be able to follow along really, really quickly. Okay. So again, totally free making of a day trader.com. All right, so let's get into like uh, the basics. W let's talk about uh, the basics because I don't know if you guys have ever heard of John Wooden. He, I actually, uh, he's a, one of the best basketball player, uh, basketball coaches ever in the world. He passed away quite a while ago and he's actually more known after he died than uh, after basketball coaching with this pyramid system. So one of the main things about him, and I actually didn't know anything about basketball. I don't know anything, obviously, except for like the greats, you know, who we all kind of hear about Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron. Anyways, so one of my students once said to me, they're like, you know what? You have a very similar system to John Wooden. He goes back to the basics. And this man won 10 NCAA championships. He won 81 uh games i mean this guy was a dynasty right i don't think anybody has ever surpassed him however every single year no matter what and this guy trained the best of the best of the best he would start with the basics he would sit these guys down who just won an ncaa and he would start with let's learn how to tie your shoe how to roll up your sock how to dribble the ball back to the basics that was his whole philosophy. And the reason why is if you're not tying your shoe correctly, you're going to get on that court, you might get a blister, you might sprain your ankle, and then everything you learn is not is useless because you can't get the basics. And that's what we what a lot of people overlook. So I really want to talk about this, because I guarantee you this is going to totally change everything. So basically, what is day trading? And why is it not investing? Because I get so many people like, Oh, when they hear I'm a day trade, Oh, I want to learn how to invest, but it's not investing. And the main reason why it's not investing is because when you invest, you want to have a very versatile, robust portfolio, right? And also when you're investing, you don't want to you don't really care if you know, there's going to be a couple of dips in a company that you're looking into, right? Let's say if you want to invest in Amazon or Apple, or even like a fund, because you're in it for the long haul. However, day trading? No, we do not do not want to diversify. The only people that diversify are the ones that are truly not earning, right? When you day trade, you are so focused day trading literally is intraday, right? You're there for the day. So can you actually do many different instruments, right? It's exactly back to my music analogy. If your child comes over to you and says, hey, I want to learn how to play a musical instrument. Well, you'll say, okay, cool, which one? And then your son, your son or daughter, they're like, okay, well, I want to learn how to play the piano. I want to play the flute. I want to play the drums and the guitar. And you look at them dumbfounded. You're like, well, they're so different. Can you focus on one? And once you master that one, Let's move on to the next one, right? And the majority of people that want to learn to day trade, when they contact me, they're like, okay, I want to learn how to do Forex, crypto, um, and it's so different. And again, even equities alone, I mean, we're talking thousands of stocks, which one? And they don't realize that it's really important to focus on one thing. It could be one stock. I know many people that are super successful with Tesla, Apple, Amazon, or how about a sector, pharmaceuticals, entertainment, tech, uh, tech, right? There's, you need to really go down, right? You need to focus on that one. You want to do futures, you know, do you want to do crude? Do you want to do ES? Do you want to do Russell? 
you know, crude is never going to be the same as oil, I mean, as wheat, right? How can you possibly look at two very, very different things and try and, and day trade them at the same time? You can't drive two cars at the same time. And that's really important. I really, really want to get that for people to understand. Okay. Investors also care about the actual companies. Day traders, we shouldn't. We are good if the comp if the price is going up or if the price is going down because we are in it for the technical analysis, right? We do not care if it's flying or tanking. We can make money either way. And that is super important. Okay. Now I want to talk about some of the myths of day trading because of this is huge, too risky. Oh my God, how much do we hear that day trading is too risky? All the time, it's gambling, it's too risky, right? The thing is, guys, if you get into a car right now and you don't have a clue how to turn on that car, the ignition, or know where the accelerator or the break-in is, and somehow magically turn that car on and go, chances of you crashing is really high, right? Because if I tell you brake and you don't know where the brake is and you're pressing on the windshield wipers, you know, you're not going to get there, right? So what's incredible about trading and the financial markets in general is that there is no barrier to entry, right? That's the reality. Anybody who has money could just literally throw it at the market. I call it donating to the market, right? And then of course, when you don't have a clue what you're doing, what you're looking for, none of that, you're going to lose it. And then what are you going to say? Oh, it's too risky. But on the contrary, it's just, you know, blindly going in and doing stuff that you have no idea how to do, right? So once you learn, and it is something that you can learn, it's a skill, it doesn't become risky anymore. So it's not a gamble. The other thing is $25,000 to get started. I hear this all the time. Oh, I can't because, you know, I need $25,000 to get started. Totally untrue, right? You, you can start crypto with like 10 bucks, you know, obviously you want to go in with a little bit more, but you can't. Futures, with the e-minis, you can start with like $500. Options, again, Forex, super low. The $25,000, it goes with a specific rule. And that rule is pretty much when you want to trade, when you want to day trade equities. However, it's to open up a margin account. You do not need a margin account. You can go in and trade with a lot less money, but just do not have a margin account. And by the way, Margin accounts is literally the same as loan sharking. If you guys don't know what margin account is, it's a very pretty way of the broker saying, I will lend you money when you lose it all. Because what happens then when you have money, when you buy on, if you lose it, you're going to actually own them a lot more money and pay interest on top of it. So the margin thing, it's horrible all the way. Even if you have 25, 100, a million dollars, do not have a margin account. You could tell them, I don't want a margin account. Okay, that you have to be a math whiz and a financial background. Like I said earlier, I was a fitness instructor. I was one of the very first fitness instructors in Manhattan to teach spinning and Pilates. Okay, you do not need math. You do not need a financial background. Anybody could do this, anyone. And that is a truth, okay? So get over that part and you'll be able to have much more fun with it. It's too stressful and chaotic. Sure, when you have charts like this, and how many of us actually believe that this is the way it should be? This will drive me mad. It will drive me completely bonkers. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that show, Queen of uh, King of Queens, right? Yeah, King of Queens. It was a really cute, funny show. It's, it's kind of old. But there was this one episode, and it was so funny. So the main character got this, like, I don't know, 90-inch screen TV and literally 2,000 channels. And him and his buddies are sitting there and playing with the TV and they're switching a channel every half a second. And one of the guys is like, you got to stop this. You are good. And I trigger my epilepsy. And this is literally like, if I sit and watch this and there are people who are doing it, I don't know how they are, are sane, to be honest with you, but this will trigger any, anybody, anybody's epilepsy, right? And this is so stressful. I personally trade with just one chart, one chart. That's all I use. And it's, you know, a charting platform, which we all do need to get. And that is really important. <clears throat> you cannot drive a car without a car, right? Day traders, we need a charting platform. We need a good, strong charting platform. But you do not 
need to buy softwares, indicators, and algorithms because the charting platform should have universal indicators. You should be in complete control of your day trading. You should be able to understand what is going on and not rely on somebody's algorithm or somebody's software because I know for a fact, and I have so many people coming and telling me this, that they buy these softwares, they buy these algorithms, and then they need to update them. And of course, they need to pay for that update. And at the end, none of them are actually making any money and they're just paying for these updates you guys could learn how to do this all all you need is an indicator which comes with your software it's already free it's already part of that okay research and news i don't know about you guys sometimes i watch cnbc but at this point i'm totally i completely stop watching all the news because it's just a bunch of arrogant experts they just all have their own personal agenda whatever their agenda may be we don't know but they could certainly because they have the airtime they could move the markets right and a lot of these experts literally are just hearing their own voices and they're not making any sense right you have to do you have to understand what you're doing and a lot of it for day trading specifically it's technical analysis you know and even you know there is a saying buy on the rumor sell on the, on the news however the reality is you can do all the research in the world. All the fundamentals could be freaking amazing. And this just happened recently. Apple came out with the best earnings they have ever, ever had. And guess what? Their stock tanked the following day, right? And then there's another stock that is not doing anything. Their earnings didn't even hit the marks and they were going up. So again, who is talking about this? So you really cannot follow the news as much as you think you need to, right? And that's super important. Market research could sometimes work against you. And it could be a lot of time spent that you could be with your family or sleeping. I know a lot of people wake up at three or four in the morning. Oh my God, how are you sustaining that? You know, it's not possible. Okay, so this is kind of like what Raleigh was talking about trading right and fomat which i want to talk about it's something that i have spotted first of all one of the myths and this is where it all comes from it's a myth it is a misconception it is a limiting belief and what is a limiting belief it literally limits you right but what people think especially beginner aspiring traders is that we need to be in and out of trades non-stop, right? It's actually a syndrome. It's called being trigger happy. And it's a real thing, all right? I can guarantee you right now that the majority of people who are sitting here have had done this at one point or another. I have been guilty myself. At one point I was taking like 40 to 60 trades per day. I mean, that's stupid and ridiculous. Just the commissions alone were eating me alive because I felt that I had to, right? And then it ha it clicked to me like, that's so, that's not true, right? I don't remember what it was. I, I, I was watching some movie or something and it was about hunters. I totally am anti-hunting completely, but this is such a perfect example, right? It was about a game, a big game hunters. Now, if you think of yourself as a trader, as a game, big game hunter, would you go out and start shooting at a cockroach or a mole rat or a prairie dog? Would you be there? No, if you're going out there to really hunt, you wanna go for that big game, right? I am not endorsing hunting again, but it's a very good analogy, right? So why do traders or especially aspiring ones, because once you get over it and become a pro trader and actually a career trader, you only do one to three really solid good trades because you believe that it is an actual thing. And the reality of it is, the more conservative you are, the better your chances are of actually earning. And I say this, the most radical way to trade is conservatively, right? Being a conservative trader, going for the one or two really great, strong, high probability trades, that is what's going to actually put money into your pockets, not those aggressive moves or being trigger happy. Small profits daily will bring you big profits yearly. Okay, it is going consistently into those trades. That is so, so important. And remember, the bigger your reward, the bigger the target, the bigger your risk. Going for smaller targets minimizes your risk as well. And that is a huge, huge deal. Now, I want to talk about FOMAT. FOMAT is huge. I'm sure you guys have heard of FOMO. And actually, the majority of people and traders I know 
we actually say FOMO. What is FOMO? You, FOMO is in every single part of our lives, right? So it's an emotional lie. Basically what it is, is fear of a missing out, right? We're always in a fear of missing out. Oh my God, what if, you know, I missed out here? What if I miss here? And fear of missing a trade, FOMO, is huge right it's huge and that is why we become trigger happy that is why we start to chase trades and what happens when we're chasing a trade that means we're getting into it too late because we're fearing that we're going to miss out right and when you get in too late what happens you get stopped out what happens after that you go into re revenge trading so it becomes this domino effect of really bad emotional stuff right so fomat fear of missing a trade it's a real thing as long as you remember one thing and one thing only, there is always, always another trade coming. There are thousands of other trades coming and that is crucial to understand. Now, what is there to trade? I don't know about you guys, but whenever I say I'm a day trader, pretty much everybody is like, always thinks I trade the stock market. The stock market is actually only 25% of the actual financial markets. And to be honest with you, it's more like 20%, right? Because we have, Forex. Forex is a huge market, right? Forex is, you know, trading different currencies. Okay. Huge. It's nothing to do with the stock market. Equities, obviously stocks are a huge thing and they're most popular. They're more popular because it's where you really want to invest as well. However, if you're trading, oh my God, there's so many sectors. There's big caps, small caps, there's penny stocks, there's sectors. You really need to hone in and know which one you are going for, okay? That is so, so important. Again, guys, it boils down to that one instrument, right? If you're going to be doing stocks, maybe only do one stock. Tesla is a great one. Apple is a great one. There's many, I mean, those aren't the only ones. There are many, but they move, you know, they have tons of volatility. And that's what you really want to go in on. Penny stocks, on the other hand, they are known to be the most manipulated, right? They are known for their pumps and dumps. They are also known to be like the mobsters of the market, right? Very few people trade penny stocks really well. And the reason why is because, again, day trading is about going for the longs and the shorts, right? And to, to be able to short a penny stock, only very few amount of brokers actually do that at all. So if you want to get into it, you really know, need to know where and how to do that. Futures, commodities. I personally trade the S&P, uh, which is the ES mini, right? Again, there's a lot of different instruments, but the futures is an awesome market. It's very different than the equities market. Options, right? This is another really big market. And of course, crypto. Oh my God, crypto is incredible. It's insane. It's a roller coaster. You do not need to start with a lot of money. But it is an enormous market, right? And it's been really gaining momentum in the past, I would say probably in the past year more than before, right? It's Bitcoin is now being backed by institutions. This is not a market to you know overlook. It is an awesome market. The thing is, you cannot trade crypto the way you would trade futures, the way you would trade equities, right? The technical analysis for crypto is way different than it is for the ES. An ES is one of the oldest markets. It's got the most amount of movement and volatility. Crypto is still, the volatility isn't super high and it's, it works differently, right? So you cannot do both. You need to diversify only if you're investing, but you need to focus if you are day trading. I want to demystify this whole brokers and margins accounts. I'm going to go back to that again, guys, because being with a broker who's giving you this margin account, it does not work in your favor. My father lost over $300,000 because he got scammed into the whole margin thing. He bought a ton of stock on margin because he did not understand the concept and my parents were in debt for like two, three years after. Margin accounts are loan sharks. That's what you need to remember. Also, because I have literally just said five different types of markets, not every broker is going to be the right broker for you, right? With crypto, you don't, you can't go into a marriage trade, right? With crypto, it's kind of easy because you just cannot do, you know, with certain exchanges. However, futures, you can. But for instance, TD Ameritrade is not a future specialist. They charge you a lot more money for commissions and to have in your account. 
versus let's say a futures broker. So you need to also find the broker that is the best for the market that you are trading. And that really also works with commissions because if you're a specialty broker with let's say futures, you'll charge way less than a broker that is for everything, right? So you need to understand that. And then you have the fees, right? You cannot drive a car without gas. You cannot have a chart without fees, right? And quotas for, equity, uh, for equities, feed is for pretty much all the other stuff, right? You need your feed. And depending on what you are trading, you could pay between seven to $30 per month, but you need good, up-to-date, real-time feeds. You cannot avoid that. Platforms, I'm going to say this again, you cannot be an artist, you cannot be a car racer if you don't have a car, if you don't have a canvas to draw on. Our canvas, our car is our platform. It's the musical instrument, right? This is our, this is what we do everything from. If you guys are not on a platform and you're pretending to day trade, you are going to lose. It's just how it goes, right? Because to really be a pro day trader, you need the right platforms. And there are so many. There are so many really good ones that give you universal indicators, right? For any, there's Ninja Trader, Think or Swim, Sierra Charts, Trading View. There, it's unlimited, right? Like there's so many different ones. So you can pick a good one for yourself. Let's talk a little bit about trading lingo because it's amazing to me that people don't realize that trading is like everything else. You need to know what you're saying, right? To understand what you're doing. When you hop in the car today, most of us have been probably driving 20, 30 years. So for us, the vernacular of driving the car is automatic, right? But my son just turned 17 and he's learning how to drive. So for him to, for me to say, okay, shift gears, he doesn't have a clue what that means because it's a whole thing behind it, right? When he has to shift the gear, he has to press on the clutch. He has to release the brake. He has to release the accelerator. That's all part of that one, the meaning of shifting gears. Being a day trader, you cannot... <clears throat> Call yourself a real day trader or want to make real money if you don't even know what a resistance area, support, divergence, right? This is the vernacular of day trading. I'm not even going to go into the super hard stuff, just the basics, like intraday trading, right? Day trading. It's literally when you are in and out of all your positions within the same day. What's a bull market? It's a market going up, right? It's trending up. It's going up. What's the bear market? It's market going down. It's a market trending down. There are three mark, three trends that we need to understand. The upward trend, the downward trend, and the sideways trend is huge. It is literally where I would say 90% of our winnings for the day and maybe even more gets lost. Okay, so what does that mean? It means you need to understand this. The other words or names that you probably heard for it is exhaustion pattern, indecision area, consolidation, channeling market, sideways market, the chop. It doesn't matter how you've heard it. It's all the same thing, okay? Now, profit target. You guys, you need to have a target for your profits. You need it as much as you need your risk management. Why? Because greed will always win. Always win, right? You cannot be like, have a pretend profit target and then you see that there's a little bit of strength and you're like, okay, I'm going to move it to another one and boom, it turns on you and stops you out, right? Because that happens. And if you're day trading, you need that target. Think of yourself as an archer, right? Like those people with the bow and arrow, they can probably throw way further than the target that they're aiming at, right? But that's where they're aiming. You need to aim and you need to have that target profit in. And don't even get me started on the risk management. I cannot even tell you the amount of times I hear, oh, I put in a mental stop. That is such a lie for everybody because ego will always win. The second the trade is starting to go against you, your ego is like, no, you're in the right place. It's just gonna, it's gonna turn, it's gonna turn. Boom, by the next, but before you know it, all your money from your account is gone. You need to have that risk management in place as much as you need of a profit target. Going back to the charts it is literally the holy grail for traders, okay? This is where everything happens. And when you go and find a good chart software, make sure that it works with your broker and you can literally trade right off of your chart and not in a dome or somewhere else because you can lose those precious seconds and the, the trade could totally change on you, okay? And indicators, I've mentioned that before. Good charting software gives you free indicators. I personally, this is it. This, I use one chart and only two indicators. I use EMA lines and the MACDs. 
and that's it. They are universal, free, and everything I need is right there on my chart for me. And I mentioned about the trending markets, right? We've got the upward trend, sideways trend, downward trend. Know the difference because the sideways trends will take all of your money and you need to understand that and know that. Okay, understanding day trading, we go in, we buy. What does that mean, a buy? Going along, it means you are entering the, the market at a lower price point, exiting at a higher price point. It's pretty understandable, right? And remember, we day traders equally, and if not more, we short the market. We love it when it's going down because we could short it. We are selling. What does that mean? You're entering at a higher price, exiting at a lower price, and you're taking the profit in between. And if you're sitting here thinking, oh, I'm never going to short the market, then you're not a day trader. That's it. You're not a day trader because it's all about technical analysis. It has nothing to do with anything else. If you're not going to short the market, that means you're an investor and you're sitting to see that just go up. And that's cool. But you have to understand the difference. You have to understand what you are. Okay. Day traders. We do not enter at market. You never enter at a market. What is market? It's going in at market right there. Why? Because that is slippage. You get massive slippage. You will lose money pretty much lose 25% of the trade right away. And you need to know where you're already setting yourself up. So you need to have your limit order or order waiting, sitting there waiting for it to go to where you want it to go because you have trade setups. Okay, back to that stop limit, guys. Do not even start with these stupid, stupid lies about mental stops. They do not work. And when you're first beginning, you got to put in that stop and you keep it there forever. Do not move it. In the beginning, do not move it. And with a profit target, if you eventually want to go higher, you will have a split target, meaning you have two targets, one at the first place and then your second one. But by then you've already moved your stop to break even so you don't lose any money. Okay. You need to understand that. I've been talking about technical analysis pretty much the whole time. If you guys don't understand what technical analysis is, you are not able to really day trade. Technical analysis is understanding and predicting the price movement with what is happening in front of you, the patterns that are happening and understanding them, right? That is using your indicators, that is using divergences, areas, reversal patterns. So what are areas? This is where the market hits an area over and over and over again. We have two very specific areas. We have the resistance area and the support area. And I talk about, and I call these two areas like our safety gears, right? It's kind of like a Formula One driver who hops in. They would never in a billion years think about going anywhere without their helmet and their seatbelt as their minimum safety, right? They have a lot more like they have. <clears throat> their fire suit, they have so many other things because they know the risk. Day trading, the risk is actually really high if you don't know what you're doing. And if you don't have, you don't understand where the resistance area is or the support, you're going to end up losing. So what is a resistance area? It is literally the ceiling of the market and where the market has hit it at least three times and the market revisits those areas over and over and over again. Support area, it is the floor of the market. It is literally where the market is hitting constantly at the low and doesn't break through. It could either reverse or it can break through, but you have to know where that area is. Reversal patterns. Okay. We all know what reversal patterns are. We all heard of them at least, right? We have the head and shoulders, the triple top, the double top. Those are reversal patterns or the double bottom, triple bottom. Those are reversal patterns. And when you see them, these are free signs. They are telltale signs. And you can back test to see how often the potential of the market totally slowing down or reversing comes about, right? And it's usually around 90%. So what is divergence? A divergence is when you're seeing, I, like I mentioned before, I use the MACDs and, and my price action. So if the price action is going up and the price and the MACDs are going down, what is that saying to me? That's divergence. It's telling me that there is a slowdown. 
already happening in the market. And I need to stay out because you never want to be in a weak market or one that is about to transition, right? I mean, that's just literally asking to just lose right there. So you have to understand when it's all happening. All right, let's put it all together. Again, everything I talked about and a lot more is in this free document that I gave for, made for you guys, makingofadaytrader.com, makingofadaytrader.com. You can go here, totally free. Everything is there for you that we just went over and a lot more as well. So I want to talk a little bit about breakouts because we all know about breakouts. We have heard about the breakout areas. They are the most probably the most powerful and the highest probability trades, right? However, if you don't know what to look for, you can miss this amazing trade, right? You will miss out on a breakout. And why is that? Because you probably didn't have your resistance area or support areas in place, right? So this is how we need to figure this out and understand when it is happening. This is what a breakout looks like. So let me give it to you guys in layman's terms. It's a little bit easier to understand in layman's terms. Imagine you are getting, you have a friend that invited you to their, to their house. You've been to your friend's house at least 800 times, right? So you hop in your car and your friend lives directly north of you. You get in, but all of a sudden on the highway that you know really well, there's a huge sign and it says, a road closed for construction and you have to take a detour, right? And this detour takes you to a place that you've never been to before. When I when that happens to me, I start to freak out. I start to stress out, like really get worried. Oh my God, what is happening? Where am I going? What if they don't continue with the detour? What if they start taking me through these tiny little side streets? What if I get, you know, really far deep and all of a sudden they say, you know what? The road is going to be closed. You have to just take side streets to get to your friend's house or you just decide to turn around. Either way, you're freaking out because you're lost. You don't know where you're at, right? So this is actually the consolidation area. This is that indecision area, right? However, all of a sudden, after the detour, which was flawless, the construction guy says, okay, the highway is open, back up, boom, you guys can continue. What happens to you? You get rejuvenated, right? You're, re you're all excited and confident again, and that's that breakout. You're continuing on, right? But if you don't know where that detour and that doubtful area is, you're going to be losing money in that area. And that's the worst place to be, okay? So let's talk about the actual breakout trade. So as I mentioned before, I only use two indicators. For me, the MACDs are the least lagging indicator. I love them. This is what I follow with every everything that I do and my price action. So as I mentioned earlier, I never go in our market, right? I never just go in with a market. What I do is I enter, I have my order waiting once I see a setup happening. For instance, here has been a breakout, right? It's been a very significant resistance area. It's been super flat here. And all of a sudden, boom, there's this breakout and massive strength in the MACDs. I never just go in where there's strength because you don't know how long that strength is going to last, right? So I have my order waiting and I use my EMA lines from where I take my trade. It's literally the same as an archer, back to that bow and arrow person. They don't just walk around aimlessly on a field. They have a very specific defined place they take these trades from. Right. And then they, I mean, they take their stance from and shoot their arrow. The same for us traders. We have to know exactly the setup that we are looking for and we have to wait for it to enter where we believe it needs to. And if it doesn't, what happens? Don't get into FOMAT. Do not fear that there's not another trade coming and start chasing it because there's always another trade coming. Okay. Always. And it's no big deal if you miss out on that one. All right, guys. So remember, all that I'm talking about and a lot more, makingofadaytrader.com. Go and get your free cheat sheet right here. And I want to now kind of bring it all into perspective and on the live, in the live market, pretty much. I want to give you a little bit more about what you're doing here. Okay, so this is my chart right here. You guys can see the chart. I don't know if any of you guys use NinjaTrader. You know what? Why don't you guys let me know what charts do you guys use? 
Um, I'd love to know which charts you guys are using, which chart platforms, what are you guys trading? Because that is a huge thing, right? You use thinkorswim, okay, awesome, Al. What else do you guys use? So any charting platform you use, web charts, trend spider, excellent. These all should have a myriad of different indicators for you guys to use, correct? So you do not need to spend money on algorithms and softwares because that's the beauty of the charting software. I personally use Ninja Trader simply because I am an, a futures day trader, the e-minis. I love Thinkorswim though for my equities. I, I'm a very big investor as well, <laughs> but investing and trading is super different, right? And I think Thinkorswim is super for that. But for my day trading, for my e-minis, this is what I use. Um, so right here, this is for the ES Mini, I use a tick chart. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a tick chart, but basically what it is, is right here, you could see I have ticks remaining. Each bar has 610 ticks. That means there are 610, excuse me, transactions per bar. And basically what that means is it's showing me in real time the amount of transaction and volatility that is happening. So I'm able to completely remove my volume, my volume indicator because I find that the volume indicators are a little bit laggy. But with this, I see exactly what's going on. And if there's a lot of volatility, a lot of volume, I see it right now. I see it going on. Right now, it's after hours, right? Like the market. So the beautiful thing about the E-minis is that it never really closes. It only closes for like 45 minutes every day for maintenance and then Saturdays is closed. So technically I am able to trade right now. It's actually just about to close soon, but you can see why it's going quite slow, right? So I don't really wanna trade in a slow moving market, right? Because the volume is really low for it. But anyways, this is how I look at it. Now, let's talk about a little bit of what I was showing you guys before. So here is a support area, right? So as I'm seeing here, the market's heading down, Boom, all of a sudden there is a massive, massive hitting to the bottom, right? It tried to break out, it tried to head, I mean, to transition, head in a different direction. I would be all over looking for trades going up. I'm a, I'm a scalper, so I go in for really small trades and targets, and I would have had some beautiful setups right here already. And then I see that it didn't go, right? And boom, it went here. And I just want you guys to see how strong these bars are. So I don't ever go in when it's strength just from the bars. And I already have my support area drawn in here because I use it as a safety mechanism. And boom, look at that. It hit it. It's not going through. It did not break through, right? So I see that. Okay, is it trying to do something else? Oh, no, it wants to get down. Okay, cool. I'm ready. So it either, at the moment, I'm looking for it to either continue up or for it to give me a breakout scenario breakout confirmation and that's exactly what happened here boom it broke through and now i'm looking for those breakout trades and that's how you use these this is super super basic simple stuff that any of us could apply to any 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 market that we are using okay and then continuing on here it broke through and then it gave me another support area boom it broke through again i can look for a really cool setup for the breakout setup, right? But here we have this really strong resistance area. It tried to break through, it tried to go up, but it didn't and boom, it headed down and I'm gonna be looking for entries for the transition trade, right? For the new trend trade, okay? So this is how I use the most simplest basic understanding of what is happening in the market, okay? Now, let me continue here. I'll just hang on a second here. Um, where am I here? Right, there's a question. Where would you take an entry? So everything I do is from my EMA lines, right? So for instance, right here, I would be waiting for it right here. This is where I would be entering right when it comes there. If it didn't come close enough, I would be putting it here and then I would definitely be filled at the EMA lines. So I only look for my EMA entries, right? So here it broke out. And by now, if I saw this breakout happen, let's say here, this is my order waiting here. I'm already going down and it's not hitting, not hitting. Oh, but here it just filled me. 
boom, I just entered. So I have my order waiting. Once I see that confirmation of either the fact that it broke through or if it transitioned altogether. Okay. All right, guys. Now imagine if we could do this every time, every week together. This is the best part of the, of the presentation because the thing is, guys, we all, at least in the beginning, are you know self-educating. And a lot of times we do buy all these different courses and there's no feedback. There's no way to understand and really understand how do you know if you are doing it right? How do you guys know if you're seeing the support area properly, if you're understanding where that breakout happens, right? So let me break it down for you. I've made something super special for you. If you get, once you get the cheat sheet, you immediately get put on the exclusive VIP list right away. And I want to encourage you to get this free cheat sheet for makingofadaytrader.com because this could literally be the turning point for you. And you will get a special invite coming into your box, your inbox. And this is only, only for the people that are on the presentation. Now, here is what I have for you guys. I have my signature program, which is Simplifying Day Trading Futures, right? This is my signature program. It is into short bite-sized videos, explanations that will literally be as if though I'm sitting down with you. It's broken down into bite-sized modules, units, and you could do it from any device, your laptop, iPad, desktop, you name it, anywhere from your phone, it does not matter, okay? But again, you have to get to be on that special invite. You need to go to makingofadaytrader.com. And again, back to how do you know you're doing it right? So what I am gonna be offering, and again, this only comes to people in the presentation from in the inbox, you will get six months one-on-one -on -one mentorship and coaching with me one-on-one -on -one mentorship, okay? This is what you guys will be getting special. So you have to sign up here. And that's just, this is how you know. How do you know you're doing it right? Because you're gonna be working and getting direct feedback and accountability from me directly. And on top of that, you will get an extra bonus. I have a live trade chat room every week. And you guys will get free membership for 30 days in my live trade chat room. And it's me. I do not hire moderators. It is not anybody else talking. It's me. So everything we're learning, we are now going to be implementing in the live market. And you'll see me in and out of trades, taking them live and understanding why the reasoning behind it. So you get access to that absolutely for free. Okay. And the only way you get to do that is once you sign up for making of a day trader.com. And because the program is so robust and has so much information, you will literally get unlimited lifetime curriculum access. Now, I'm not telling you the price, but one thing I will guarantee is that it costs less than the average trade. All right, the entire program plus six months working with me and 30 days in the live trade chat room is less than one trade that you would normally take and probably not be super consistent with, right? This whole course is exactly that, all right? But as with everything, there is a catch. So here's the thing, guys. I can only take 25 people. Because of my one-on-one -on -one mentorship, I'm only able to take on 25 students to really give you my full attention and my full commitment, all right? But remember, when you get the free cheat sheet, you get put on the VIP list for the six months mentorship, accountability, and 30 days in my live trade chat room. Okay, again, making of a day trader.com. Make sure that you guys get it. And now what I want to do is open up for questions. If you guys have any questions, and we can go more into really looking at the charts and understanding and the indicators that I use. Because I get a lot of people asking me what indicators I use, so we could go through the indicators here. And this is the time for you guys to ask me all of your questions. So let me know any questions that you have. And Raleigh, Pat, if there are any questions somewhere else that I'm not able to see, let me know, please. Yes, there are plenty. There was one question uh, that came up uh, this morning. I noticed you posted some of the email and some 
Is this the only oh, hello. I don't, is somebody talking? I'm sorry, uh, Marina. Um, I had my I had my microphone muted. <laughs> anyway, um, so the question was this: you're you're showing the E mini S and P. Is that the only futures market that you trade, or do you look at other futures markets? No, I only trade the E S minis because think of it like that, right? Like once you master something, and it's amazing because I get so many people that come to me and they want to trade all these different, even if it's futures. Oh, I want to learn how to trade crude, Nasdaq, E S. And I say to them, well, are you doing well at any of them? Oh, no, you know, I'm not doing well at any of them. I'm like, okay, well, why don't you start with one? And after you master that one, you could go on to the next one. And I have seen this time and time again. Once you master an instrument for day trading, you don't want to go into more because it's not the more you do does not make you more money, right? But if you're mastering one particular instrument, that's when you could really make a lot of money, right? Liberace, he was one of the best pianists ever, right? But he didn't go into a guitar. I'm sure he would have mastered the guitar because he knew that piano was his thing and he loved it and he did great at it. So I just recommend that if you guys want to do more, maybe investing in swing trading would be more of that for you, right? There's a little bit more leeway to do more instruments. I got you. So from your perspective, focus on the E-mini S&P. It's got enough liquidity. It's got enough movement. There's enough potential there for people to make some incremental money there without any problem. You've got the techniques, the approaches, the indicators for that. But I think I also heard you say, once you've mastered that, these setups may also work in other futures markets. Let's say if you like trading crude. Oh, absolutely, they... absolutely. Yeah. It's just about understanding and studying the market. It's not just hopping in with a strategy right away. It's understanding because the ES is very liquid. Crude, you know, the, there's a joke saying that it's like an erratic, emotional teenager, right? It could go up and down and all over the place. The E-mini is more stable. It's a mature instrument, right? It's been around. I think it's also one of the highest traded instruments in the world, from what yes. I understand. And yeah. that get, makes it a difference, right? You don't want to sit at the poker table for five cents. Yeah, it's a little bit of money, but, you know, it's a bunch of newbies who don't have a clue to play poker. You want to learn how to really play poker you sit at the you know five thousand dollar table that's an exaggeration but those are the pros like they are just a different game and the es allows you to do that a crude you know you have to understand what it's doing and then apply absolutely okay to your point about indicators so there were questions that came up about the various ema lines that you have there and i'm correct those are emas right yes they're exponential moving averages so here let me um just open this up for you. Right, so I use the 52 period, the 20 period, and the 135 period. So it, you know, I'm able to see three different time frames and one on, on all of this. Okay, and while you've got your indicators open there, so the MACD oh, settings. Uh, yeah, also. the MACDs, it's just universal 12, settings. 12, 26, 9, yep. Yeah, and what I do is, because when you get MACDs, and this is again, any, any charting software, you will always get three points. You'll get the MACDs, the average and the difference. I personally just remove the average and the difference. You could just remove them entirely or make it transparent. And I only focus on the MACDs because I like to keep my charts clean and simple. Sure. So from that perspective, if you're looking at a trade that's setting up for you, how do you use the MACD uh, in that particular situation? Um, sorry, I didn't understand what you mean. No, no, I'm saying you're showing the MACD. Uh, let me turn this off. I've got a phone buzzing here. Okay. <laughs> no, you see the MACD down there. So from that perspective, if you're looking at a trade setup, something you're thinking about a breakout is coming, how do you use, do you use the MACD as a confirming signal for you? Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't do anything without the MACDs. So I have here the dotted the dashed line this is zero mm -hmm. so if you're at a zero with the macd's that means there's absolutely no real strength in the market like right here you see you're really close and there's nothing there's no strength right so when it finally breaks through and i have these blue lines just for myself to show me where that extra strength is and once it really goes there and there's no divergence that's when i enter with the macd's everything is once i see the price action but the confirmation i need is going to come from my macd's Okay. Is it enough strength? Is it moving divergence? Stuff like that. Absolutely. All right. 
Okay. All right, let me take a look here. So, oh yeah, 610 tick. Do you ever change the tick setting or have you just found that that's consistently works? I used to have three charts. They were three different tick charts. One was 233, which I think is two micro. And then I also used the 1597 ticks. And I think that that was too much. So the 610 kind of is like in that in between. And I found it to be the best one. And what I actually did was I took the EMA lines from the other two. And that's why they're here right now. And I use them like that. So I don't need to go and look at other ticks. I get it just from the EMA lines. That's what these are. Okay. That's where they came from. And to your point, when you were talking about the one of the focuses of this presentation about the fear of missing out on a trade, do you, from your perspective, do you work towards any kind of a daily goal such that if you reach that goal, you stop trading altogether? Do you have any, any thoughts around that? Yeah, I definitely do. Because people don't realize that each trade we're going to take, win or lose, it takes up a lot of our energy. And after a certain amount of time, no matter if you take, you know, three winning trades, it's still the same energy, right? You get excited. You have to do all that mind work and then it becomes emotional. So I personally am done after one or two, maximum three trades, if it's like one after the other. But after that, I'm spent. My emotion is spent. So it's not really about the money, because once you go into emotional trading, that's when you start to lose, right? When you are still logical and making valid decisions and that's because of our energy right when you're all sure. so yes i personally stop i only could do maybe like an hour hour and uh, not I, I can't even do an hour and a half anymore it's too much energy too much of my mind is you know it's very full on sure and that's yeah so that's pretty much how i do it exactly well marina I tell you what, we've come to the end of the session here and uh, I think this has been fantastic information. It is never a bad idea for all of us to get back to the basics and to just to, because there's things there that we probably have overlooked or maybe not paid enough attention to. I, for one, am guilty of mental stops. I do play stops, but you're absolutely correct about what the ego can do for you and what greed can do for you and the importance of that in particularly in something as highly leveraged as future trading, because you can make it in a second and you can lose it in a second. And yeah, and absolutely. Just, and it, 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 will, it, will, it will train you about that. So once again, thank you so much for your time. Delightful to see you again. We hope to have you back in the near future. And thank and, you so much uh, for having me. <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> welcome. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye, everybody. All right. So I'm going to grab the screen here, folks. And uh, let's see, here we go. And once again, that was Marina Villatoro, the trader chick. And once again, she is offering this free day trading cheat, uh, cheat sheet. You can learn how to find high probability trade setups, how to spot those reversals, divergences, changes in market direction, and seeing and avoiding consolidation in transition areas. And the link is westmarktrading.com forward slash Villatora, or you can also, it's this, it goes to the same place. You can go to the makingofadaytrader.com and it takes you actually to the same page. So once again, we were delighted to have Marina with us and uh, to share with us her information. And, you know, Pat, I thought it was a great way to wind up what, is, what has been, I think, a very successful day for us. But before we go on, I think